At the beginning of this playlist on polymorphism, I said that one of the motivators for doing this would potentially be sorts, the ability to write a single sort that worked with multiple types. It's time to come back to that idea. So we had this bubble sort, and this bubble sort was written to work with doubles. And we said that if we wanted to work with some other type, we'd have to copy it and then make minor changes. In some cases, the only change was just changing the name of the type in it. That's not a good way to write your code. Plus, it just seems natural that we should be able to write a type and have it, or write a single sort, and have it work for at least many types, if not an infinite number of types, ideally an infinite number of types. Let's go ahead and let's create a new object, and we'll call it sorting. And then I'm going to take this bubble sort, and I'm going to move it over into that file. And then we'll talk about how we make it parametric. Well, so the first thing that we might be tempted to do is just put type A there and say that this is an array of A. Seems great. Obviously, Scala has a problem with this. And the problem is that type A, as specified there, could be anything. And so, in a very literal sense, Scala says the only things you can do with this are the things that you could do with type any, because it knows that those would be safe turns out you can ask for the string value or whatnot and we could look in the any type of uh, sure we go to scalalang documentation API and I'm going to go to the 2.12 API here Scala any. What can you do with an any? Well, it turns out there's not all that much. Uh, you can convert it to a string, you can do a cache code, you can do an equals, but there aren't that many operations that you can do with type any. And in particular, less than is not one of them. And that's because there are lots of types that, that don't necessarily have a natural ordering to them. So how are we going to fix this? Well, we're going to look at two ways of fixing this. The first way is to introduce a new concept called type bounds. So we're going to take this type A and we're going to say it has to be a subtype of something called ordered. Turns out that the ordered type has inside of it a less than. Anything that's ordered can do a less than comparison as well as a greater than, less than or equal to, and greater than equal to uh, because it should be an ordered type. Sounds good. Let's extend app and let's put some code inside of here to build an array. We'll just make 10 random numbers and then we'll call bubble sort on that array. Hmm, doesn't seem to be happy. This leads to the question, why not? Well, it turns out that this type bound only works for things that are subtypes of ordered. And as it happens, double is not a subtype of ordered. Neither is int. Okay, they are both very kind of basic types. That's why they're un under any vowel instead of any ref. You can do a minor modification to this. And this is just kind of a syntactic sugar thing in Scala. Change the colon to a percent sign. And what this means is that it will take anything that is a subtype or that has an implicit conversion to a, sub -sub to a subtype. It turns out that double and int both have implicit conversions to uh, ordered. And so we can use this same bubble sort now. Let's make an array. We'll make 10 integers. Util dot random dot next int. Okay. And let's show that we can bubble sort that as well. So this one sort now works for doubles and for, for ints. Uh, it'll work for strings. This sort will work for anything that is ordered okay, or that has a conversion to order. So this will do lots of things because lots of things do have a natural ordering. But there are some times when either you want to sort something that doesn't really have a natural ordering, for example, students, 
What's the natural ordering of her students? Well, maybe sometimes I want them to order by name, sometimes by grade. Who knows? There's lots of data in there, so I might pick different things. Or colors. There is no natural ordering for colors, but I could sort them by their intensity, their brightness, just their red, just their green, just their blue component. I could pick different things to sort them uh, on, but it really doesn't make sense to say that a color is ordered. To deal with that, we're going to write a slightly different version of this sort, and this is actually the one that I prefer. Here, we're going to make it so that A is, once again, just an, un an unconstrained type. We're not going to put any type bounds on it. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to pass in another function. So the operation that I'm missing here is a less than. So I'm going to pass in something, I'll call it LT for less than. And less than is going to take two arguments of type A and return a Boolean. So the idea is if the first argument is less than the second argument, it returns true, otherwise it returns false. And so then our if here change to, changes to LT of one argument comma, the other argument. Now, let's do, I'm going to change the name on that so that there's not an ambiguity between these two. Because I curried this, uh, which we want the currying for the type inference, but because I curried it, this looks like it could be calling the curried version, and then we left out the other argument, as opposed to calling the one with the type bounds. So how would we call this? Well. I could call bubble sort comp and I could pass it nums. If I wanted to sort in normal order, I could do underscore less than underscore. Okay, so that will be our, our less than function is actually doing less than. The power of this sort is the fact, well, what if I want to sort from greatest to least instead of least to greatest? I can pass a greater than in place of the less than, and now we will sort it in reverse order. If I had some case class that had different values inside of it, I could sort based upon some weird comparison. So the thing that I like about this version of our sort is the fact that by passing in a function and having an unbounded type, I get the ability to sort either data that doesn't have a natural ordering or to sort data in multiple different ways. One line can sort it in, in normal order, one line can sort it, sort it in reverse order. If there are uh, classes, one line could sort it based upon one field, the next line could sort it based upon another field. So this is my preferred way of doing parametric sorts, uh, but the type bound approach also works quite nicely. Uh, if you look in the standard libraries, and you will find that the collections actually have multiple versions of sort. We basically just wrote two of them here. Obviously they use a different sorting algorithm than we are using. But so if you go into the, the sequence type and you look under S for sorted, there is a method called sorted and this just uses an implicit ordering. Okay, so this is basically saying there is a conversion you know, to, to something that will uh, give it an ordering. There's also a sort by and a sort with. We basically wrote sort with. Notice it takes a, an argument LT, it takes two A's and gives back a Boolean. That looks a lot like what we just wrote. There is also a sort by where you just give a function that takes one of your type A's, gives back some type B, and then B has to be ordered. So we could write this on our own. I'll leave that as an exercise for the viewer. But hopefully this shows you how parametric types can allow you to do things like sorting functions, write them once, and they now work for an infinite number of types, whatever you want, and potentially provide you with great flexibility in how you do the sorting.